So after a very tense test session last week, we had this problem with the carburetor linkage, which if you watched yesterday's video, you saw that we got that solved. That's fixed. But our fuel system problems are far from over. They don't end with the carburetor. I got the carburetor all put back together, cleaned up and ready to go back on the truck but we still have work to do before we take this truck to the dyno. We took the front wheel off of it so we could get a fuel jug up in the wheel well and use the fuel pump to pump the fuel cell dry. The fuel cell still has about 12 gallons of methanol in it that we need to get out. Explain what's going on here. Okay, so we need to drain the tank and pull the fuel filters off this thing because I feel like the fuel filters are plugged with crap. Every time we, uh, every time we take a bowl off the carburetor, the bowls are full of white crap. Where's the white crap coming from? I don't know. We got to get to the bottom of it and we got to find out what's going on because we're having fuel system problems. Why does it look like pee? We used a different top loop this time because Jake's was out of the stuff that I usually use, which is, we usually use Power Plus, and we used a different top loop, and that's what it looks like. I hate it. I love it. <laughs> so once we got the fuel tank pumped dry, me and Kenny pulled the fuel filters off of it, put them up on the bench and took them apart very carefully. And to my surprise, the fuel filters visually both looked really good. Visually, you would never think there was anything wrong with them. I began to second guess my theory on what's going on until I tried to blow air through them. You couldn't blow air through one of them. And the other one was definitely partially plugged. Now I can't say with absolute certainty that it's this different top lube that we're using, but there's definitely something going on this stuff is getting through the filters and into the carburetor somehow. So we dive into the fuel cell to see what the inside of it looks like. We were shocked. Kenny wiped down the center and you can see what the outsides look like, full of this white chalky looking substance. We used WD-40 on some blue shop towels and by the time we got done, it looked like mud water in the bottom of the fuel cell. Now that we knew where all this crap came from, we need to get new fuel filter elements from Jigs. So me and June and Chevy jumped in the Suburban and we make the drive up to Delaware, Ohio to Jegs main warehouse. I let the dogs out of the Suburban, let them go potty for a minute. They'd been cooped up for quite a while in the car. And then I went in to retrieve my parts. The showroom up there is pretty cool. And it's really amazing to look at the family portraits of all the different family members and what they've achieved as a family. Pretty inspirational, really. All the different forms of racing that they're into and successful in all of them. Hopefully someday me and my boys can achieve something like this. Anyway, I get my parts, I run out the Suburban, double check the part numbers before I leave and then head home. And when I get back to the shop, I'm surprised by Kenny Powers has gone and gotten me a Roku television for the shop. This is a Vicky deal. She didn't even know where he put it. He had to show her where it was hung on the wall. Anyway, while they're dinking around with that television, I start putting the carburetor back on the truck. And then I get a visitor. Tommy showed up today to do some target practice out back with Allison's mom. She must have got herself a little handgun or something and she wanted to come out and practice shooting it. So if there's some random gunshots in this video, <laughs> that's why. Anyhow, I just about had the carburetor all finished up. All I had left to do was put the return springs on it and make sure that we don't have any problems with the needle and seats. Kenny was finishing up putting fuel filters in the back and then he pumped some fuel into a five gallon jug and brought it in so we could put some fuel in the fuel cell and test everything out. 
I had Kenny dump about a gallon and a half in the fuel cell, and then I wanted to flush the lines out. I couldn't believe how nasty the fuel looked at first until the fresh alcohol made its way into the jug. Pretty incredible, the difference in top loading. Once we were done flushing the lines, Kenny put the front wheel back on the truck and we set it on the ground. Okay, you ready, Mr. Kenny? Yep. All right, here's what I want you to do, okay? Before we do anything, turn the fuel pump on, off, on, off, on, off, on, okay? Like three or four times and keep doing it until I tell you to stop. And if I yell stop, for sure, like, if I say whoa, that means it's flooding. We don't want to turn the pump on again, okay? All right, go ahead. Okay, guys, so I get some questions every once in a while, and this is an important one. Anytime you're working on a carburetor, uh, you always hear me tell Billy or Kenny or whoever's in the truck, turn the pump on and off three or four times before you try and start the, the engine. And the reason I tell them to do that is that I want to inspect down the venturies and I want to hear the bowl vents. I want to hear the air come up out of the bowl vents. I can hear the fuel come into the bowls that way. And in case there's a needle and seat hung or a piece of dirt stuck in a needle and seat, turning the fuel pump on and off helps pulsate and helps knock anything loose that might be stuck in a needle and seat. And if there is something stuck in the needle and seat and it does flood, I'll be able to look right down the venturies and see the fuel running out of the boosters immediately. If you've got an air filter or a hat in the case of a blow through application like this, if it's on there, you're blind as a bat. You can't see any fuel coming out of the boosters. And with a big pump like what we've got on Billy's truck, if it had one or two needle and seats hung, uh, you can fill the crankcase full of fuel very, very fast. So it's very important, guys, anytime that you're working on a new carburetor or an old carburetor or something you've just had your hands in, uh, always try and make sure that you first fire it up without an air filter on it or without the hat on so that you can make sure that there are no problems with your float levels and your needle and seats. The next thing I do is prime the accelerator pumps with my finger this allows me to give a little pump shot down the engine to help get it started. And I can also feel the linkage working smoothly so that I know it won't bind up. All right, crank it over. If it starts up and runs, go ahead and make sure you turn the fuel pump on, okay? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and start it. The engine fires right up, sits there and idles okay, but I can tell when I tip the throttle blades open, the jets are way too big. The engine's extremely rich and the air fuel ratio confirms it on the dash. So most likely what I'm gonna have to do is jet the carburetor back down to where it was when we got it from Kevin. jet this carburetor back down uh, to where Kevin had it initially because when we took it up to the track of course we we're fighting plug fuel fillers again so I was jetting the carburetor up thinking that's gonna do something and reality is the fuel filters were plugged so bad that I couldn't even blow air through them so I want to take this jetting back down to where Kevin had it originally because it's so fat on the brake that there's like plumes of smoke coming up out of the exhaust and the air fuel ratio is way rich. So we're going to fix that. So last week when we were at Pacemakers, the air temperature was 37 degrees and the density altitude was below sea level. Today it's over 60 degrees and humid. So it's definitely rich now. All right, so we're back to 178 squared all the way around. Where'd that gas go? Oh, here it is. So we're back to 178 squared. That's exactly where Kevin had it when Billy and whoever took it out of the box and put it on to begin with. So we'll see what happens.
as soon as the truck fired up, I could tell immediately it was much more crisp and the throttle response was much better. Now that I'm confident that the carburetor is okay, the jetting seems right, I'm not having any problems with the needle and seats, it's time to warm the truck up. So I motioned for Kenny to open the lean out valve to lean the air fuel mixture out and allow the engine to warm up quickly without milking the oil. Once we get the water temperature up over 165 degrees, I have Kenny shut the lean out valve and it's time to set the trans brake and put it up on boost. This is the first time that Kenny's ever sat in the truck, set the trans brake and put it on the deck. He was a little bit intimidated at first, but he definitely enjoyed it. Just to be sure that Kenny didn't make a mistake and let go of the button with the throttle on the deck, I put the truck up on the lift, raised the tires off the ground, just to be safe. I could tell Kenny was a little bit nervous, so I told him he did a good job. And as soon as I turned my back, he looked at Vicky and patted his chest. He said his heart was beating out of his chest when he was doing that. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you what. Pretty cool stuff. Have you never been in it when it, like behind the driver's seat when it does that? See no big plumes of smoke in here now. And it come up nice and clean. Oh, yeah. Earlier when we put it on the brake, it was filling the whole garage full of smoke so bad. It plumes of exhaust smoke out both stacks. Hmm. It was way too rich. So now we got fresh fuel filters. The carburetor's back exactly the way it should be to get started. And it's ready to go on the dyno tomorrow at CIA. I'll take all my carburetor stuff with me. And uh, if I need to jet it up, I can. But we're good to go. Uh, it's ready. All right, guys. So Billy made it back from New York uh, with another trailer. It's too dark back there to show it tonight, and I didn't video him coming in because, well, he came in the driveway the wrong way, and the trailer's really long, and he drug it through the yard and tracked mud on the driveway, so I was a little aggravated. I didn't film that, but... It's fine. We got the trailer parked out back. I can uh, maybe show it to you guys tomorrow on tomorrow's video. Tomorrow, I'm taking the Suburban down to uh, Bowman Goodyear in Hebron and dropping it off uh, to get an alignment done. Um, we put a new steering gear box on it, and it's much better, but it still wanders just a little bit, so I don't know whether there's a tie rod or, you know, I don't know. But uh, I definitely want to get that taken care of. So I'm going to drop it off down at Bowman Goodyear in Hebron tomorrow morning. And they're going to get us fixed up on an alignment. Kenny's going to bring me back here to the shop. Billy's supposed to be here about noon. And we're going to start loading everything up and getting ready to take this little guy and put it on the rollers at CIA Performance in Columbus. Now, um, let me think. We've only ever dynoed this truck one time, uh, and that's been two or three years ago now. It was on the dyno. No, we've dynoed it twice. We dynoed it one time when it was on nitrous. So technically, this, uh, this was the second time, so this will be the third time we've ever had it on the dyno, but the first time really didn't count. It only made like 600 of the wheels way, 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 way back. So the last time it was on the dyno, it was on the dyno at on three performance and that's a Mustang dyno. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what dyno CIA has, but the last time it was on a dyno, it was on a Mustang at on three performance. Uh, it had Borg Warner S366 turbos, a pair of 66 millimeter stock S366 turbos. Um, it was 406 cubic inches. It was 13 to one compression. Uh, no intercooler on E85 with a 750 blow through carburetor. I can't remember if it had a turbo 400 in it or a power glide. Anyway, um, on the Mustang dyno in that combination, uh, if I remember right, 
um, it was at 1260 to the wheel and, and the, the graph was straight up. It was 1260 horsepower to the wheel and it uh, broke the tires loose on the dyno. And it was like nine o'clock at night. And it was the last pull that we could make for the evening. And we didn't have any more time and we really didn't need to. I mean, it's just a number, but it made 1260 to the wheels two or three years ago on E85 with a 750 carburetor, no intercooler on pump E85, I think. It might've been Ignite Red, I don't know. But anyway, it made like 1260. It was headed for 13 to 1350 is what it looked like to me before it broke the tires loose. So tomorrow, it's now uh, a 421 cubic inch. It's 11 to one compression. It's on methanol with a 1050 carburetor and it's got much bigger turbos. I think these are 76 millimeter turbos. I can't remember. I'd have to ask Billy what turbos are on. I know they're 7685s, I think. But anyway, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, this thing is gonna get bolted down on the rollers and we're gonna turn this thing loose. I don't know that we're really gonna try and lean on it real hard. I think the main thing Billy's concerned about is making sure the carburetor's right, make sure the tune-up's right, make sure the air fuel ratio is right. And it makes whatever it makes. It doesn't really matter as long as it does <laughs> what we need it to do on the street and on the track. But I'm sure there's probably still quite a bit of interest in a number, you know, I have no idea. I'm guessing it's been making somewhere around 1300 to 1500 horsepower. But like I said in yesterday's video, I'm pretty certain that we've been having trouble with that uh, secondary throttle blades being pushed over center uh, at about 25 pounds of boost. I think it's been doing it on the 752. I could be wrong, but tomorrow we're going to get an opportunity to put it on the dyno and mash this thing wide open, throw 30 pounds of boost down its throat, and I can literally stand there and watch the secondary throttle blades. And if they go over center, we're going to put a a bracket on there or something to hold them wide open so that they can't be pushed over center and close off the throttle bores in the back. So that's tomorrow. Check back in with us. It'll either probably be on Billy's channel. <laughs> you guys might have to wait a day or so. His videos don't get up quite as quick because they got a lot longer process than I do. Mine's all just done on my cell phone. But I think Tommy's coming to film, and it'll probably be on Billy's channel later this week. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all that. Greatly appreciate it. Today was a much better day than over the weekend. I'm feeling better. Um, happy that Billy's home safe. And uh, I don't know. See you tomorrow.